Activate light. Move. Activate light. Move. You need to move with speed and proficiency in movement because some of you guys are not moving with proficiency in movement. If I tell you to move this way and you have to take a shot this way, you're not gonna you're not gonna crab walk, right? Because that's not proficient. Proficient in movement is the toes are always in the direction of movement. So if I need to move this way, my toes are in the direction of movement. If I need to engage, I, I engage by let going of my lower body to my upper. So when you guys are moving in between white light here, now I'm moving, see? White light here, boom, now I'm moving. Here, see the efficiency in the movement? It's almost kind of like a boxer a little bit in the uh in the you're, you're white light and you're off. You're white light and you're off. So that's like slipping, right? There's a proficient way to use a light source tactically with a gun. Okay? So let's talk over some uh some light source that are out there. Majority of you guys are running um, the Surefire with the uh, knuckle switch, correct? So the thing about this is it's a great light. This is a great light for, for me. I run this during direct action operations, CQB, where I need to get in, search a building, search a house, and stuff like that. Great light source. The problem is that you need to readjust your grip on the grip that I taught you this morning, because the grip that I taught you this morning is where? It's tightening underneath what? High on the trigger guard, right? So it's going to obviously press against the uh, knuckle switch. So I readjust my grip by, instead of going here, elongating my fingers when my knuckle line is pressing here, I actually move this grip further along, right? And then now my grip just gets replaced so I can turn on and off the light anytime I want, okay? Based off on my, my pull. So if I'm high on here and then I need to, see, I'm still tight on my grip, now I'm gonna apply light. Okay, it's just readjusting your grip. A lot of you guys are on a pull or doing this. Okay, if you're doing that, man, think about like, let's say you're making entry into a home, right? Think about it, you're making entry into a home, they don't know you're there, so you haven't lost the element of surprise and you're pulling your gun because you're hearing threats and you flash, you flash yourself. You understand? Let's say your team is doing a quiet approach to a building and one of you guys flash. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you what I shoot at. Light. Okay, so I've been caught up in pretty bad gunfights before and you flash a light towards me, that light's going down. Okay, so it's a natural thing. So in, a, uh, in the process of shooting positions, we have different type of shooting positions. All I'm gonna say is this, I don't care what position you shoot, you have this position, this position, the FBI and all that, I'm just saying free float the light, man. Get used to doing, shooting in any one of these positions right here. Okay, just free float the light. Don't always go to this. Don't always go to this. Don't always go to this, right? Because what you're doing is you're establishing a mindset. You're establishing a point, right? Um, you wanna free float that light, that light source. If you free float the light source out here, people are like, well, you know, you can get shot if you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Free float that light source away from your head. Okay? All right. So I narrow down to certain light sources I like. I love Surefire just because they're power and they're luminous. Uh, I like the Fury Tactical, man. This is, a, this is a very powerful light, and it also allows me direct line of... Um, uh, a funnel right in the center, a beam of light in the center, but also it allows me that fringe, okay? So when we look at a tack light, we're looking at that fringe. And the reason why is because that fringe is what I'm picking up my front sight with. So if, if I'm here, see the fringe, it's picking up the rear, but it's towards the target. See, I'm picking up my front, my sights through the fringe of the light. I'm not directly shining through the, uh, the, the gun source. I'm exposing the threat, and I'm picking up my sights through the fringe, understand? All right. This is what I usually run with on, on my kit, is the uh, Tactical MV. Um, what I like to do is I like to put a bungee on it, a bungee source on it, so I can go ahead and uh, get it into these three fingers, okay? Now, once I get into these three fingers, 
it allows me to get to my mags. It allows me still mobility. It allows me to get to that light. It allows me, my hands, to get to my equipment line, my gun line. So a bungee is really nice. If, you, if this gets in your way on this side, then you can, uh, you can go reverse bungee and you can still do the same thing. Understand? So you got to modify your equipment, man, based off on your, on your tactics, on, on your, uh, the way that you carry your equipment every day. It needs to be modified where it's easy, deployable, and it's going to work for you. Okay? So free up these hands. If you don't have, um, if you don't have bungee stuff, sometimes I tape up my light source and I build uh, some kind of uh, wall barrier here. And basically, that's going to give my grip to pull this, this light back into me. I don't like the new tactical lights with the guard around them, right? Because it doesn't allow me to palm activate my light. So I hold my light with these two fingers right here. Hold the light with these two fingers, and I wedge it into the palm of my hand like this. So what it allows me is what? It allows me those, those three fingers, and I can still utilize the light, okay? So think about when you're working today, I don't want you to hold the light like this, right? Because how are you going to get to your mags? Unless you can do it. Unless you can do it. I can do it. I can still get to my mags like this, depending on what light source I'm in, all right? So the next drill is you're going to have a light. We're going to show off all the lights. You're going to pull up the gun, all right? You're going to fire and take it off. So it looks like this. What we don't want to do is get greedy with the light source. Okay, so back when I went to CQB training, it was in 99, right? Counterterrorist training in North Carolina, it was in 99. We went through the shoot house and complexes with lights, right? Tack lights on. So you think about, like, if you look at CQB, everybody understand dynamics of CQB at least? So when you go to your points of domination, you have interlocking fire. So everybody's kind of swinging their lights in, right, to kind of collapse their sector. And that was our tactic. It was a good tactic. It was very fast, very good, very effective. We were able to neutralize everything really rapidly. The problem was when we went white light and we started interlocking these white lights in a room, well, you got windows in Iraq, okay? We started getting shot at through the windows. We started getting shot at on Xville because everybody knows that U.S. are, are here in their neighborhood, right, and they're going to start shooting at you. I need you to be disciplined on your white light tactics, especially for you guys. So if you're converging on a crisis site and you're working and you're not used to working with him, you understand that? You cannot afford to lose that element of surprise. So we call it going quiet, quiet clears, right? So we go quiet, we go to points of domination. The first shot is called go loud, and then we fucking get violent, okay? So you really want to go quiet until you have to go loud. Light source, you only want to expose it when you need it, and lights off. So if I was to draw the gun, the gun comes out obviously first. Okay? I don't want to do this. Oh. Okay? If I see you as a threat, if I see you boom as a threat, I'm like, oh shit, he's threat. Now I'm coming off line. You understand? So let's just say Zach is my threat. I see him, he's a threat. Okay? That, that split second of what? Flash, it was going to give me what? A little bit of time, right? Reactive time. Oh, shit, now I'm offline. See? So on the next drill is I want you to present light, flash, on, off, present the gun, on, boom, off. You got to identify, right? Identify, draw the gun, identify, boom, off. What I don't want to see is this. Or this. See how I'm drawing the gun out? The gun's going to be drawn before that light comes out because what am I doing? I'm maximizing what? Concealment. I'm maximizing darkness. Low light. Okay, now I'm going to start prepping you for low light conditions. So in the process of things, if you're training on low light, then you need to free up a hand, right? You need to free up your your non-shooting hand because you need to have a light source in that hand or if you have a light source in your gun. People always ask me, well, when's better? Well, it depends on what the fuck I'm doing. If it's CQB direct action operation, I'm going in a building, I probably have a tack light on me, 
right, on my gun. But on the everyday carry, I like a, a separate source because if I'm searching a room or I'm searching a buddy, I don't want to point my gun towards them, you know what I mean? You don't want to use your gun light as a, as a, a normal source of light, okay? So when you're practicing for this, you need to fire one hand, right? You need to fire one hand. And there's so many different techniques on firing <coughs> one hand, right? Some people say, hey, well, you, if you're right, uh, if you're right um, hand, left eye dominant, you need to twist your gun this way, right? Yeah, sometimes I did that. I, I have done that before. Um, and we also, you know, train on so many different ways where they're like, oh, put, put more weight on here, blade off to it. I'm going to tell you what works for me, okay? I stand like this normally on a soft sleeve stance. Now I'm just going to take this hand away. I'm going to stabilize my gun now with more trigger finger because I need to pull it back to the right because the gun is going to go to the path of what? Least resistance. So if I'm firing with a normal trigger finger, it's going to move, it's going to move like that regardless, right? But if I put more trigger finger in there, what it's going to do is going to push my rounds more to the right, not pulling it to the left, understand? It's going to still pull to the left because you're, you're getting rid of this hand. Okay, so you're, you're understand your shots are not going to be that accurate as two hands because now you have a stabilizer here. So your stabilizer is your thumb. So remember that really aggressive thumb grip position? Now I'm pulling it here. I even, I even experiment with pulling the gun this way because I know it's going to kink up this way. All right, you just got to find your, your twist. You got to find that, that torque. Okay, so try to move here. Drop your base, drop your hand down this way, and this is your firing position. Watch all my weight shift over to my right side. I'm not blading my, my body off to the target. I'm just shifting. It looks like this. If I, if I get shot my, here, now I'm going here like this. That's how it looks, okay? Eyes and ears. Get a good grip to start off with, right? Good grip because you're, uh, you're firing one hand. So light source out, nice and controlled press. So flash, come up, flash, off. See the lights off? Come up, flash, lights off. Flash, lights off, lights off. Flash, cut it offline, flash, fire off. See, you want to almost disappear into the night. Understand? So you only flash your light when you need it. So prep your fucking gun, prep everything out. You're not taking it to the wall in case he's a, uh, uh, well, you identify that threat already, right? So you identify the threat, move offline, identify the threat, boom, lights off. Surprise, speed, and violence, okay? When I lose the element of surprise, I need to make it up with speed and violence, right? So when you're flashing, you lost the element of surprise. If you accidentally white light yourself, you lost the element of surprise in your mind. You should understand that, okay? So what I don't want to see is this. With no purpose. As soon as you flash, pull offline. As soon as you flash, pull offline, okay? Once you identify, pull offline, get aggressive on the gun. All right. So imagine you guys are in a hallway, right? And you're looking down the hall. You know, you're walking down the hall. You're looking down the hall. You see a threat, and now you're moving offline. Okay? Disappear. All right. So if I'm back here, okay, and I'm away from my barrier right here, okay, at night, unlike during the day, at night I want to suck up to a barrier, okay? So when, when it's daytime and I have a vision, I want to kind of get back away from the barrier, okay? It gives you more uh, vantage point. It's the same amount of cover, right? But it gives you, so you're not getting, if I'm during the day and I'm fucking shooting right here on, on a barrier and I'm getting shot at the barrier, you're going to get a lot of scrap, no, you're going to get a lot of kickback in that area. So if you're, if you're backed up a little bit, you're not going to get all that frag. You get it from the rounds? But the problem is at night, if, if I'm on back here, I'm lighting up this. See? 
So if the threats are back here and I'm lighting up this, I really don't see too much of that. I don't see what's beyond. You know what I mean? So I kind of want to come up to the barrier and maximize the barrier so I could see beyond the barrier so I could see the, the, uh, the threat. Okay? So if I uh, say I'm coming up, I come up to the barrier here. Okay? First off, on the position, so turn on the lights. Across here, if you look at the line right here, see the line from the uh, barrier? If I come out and I want to stabilize my shot to get this out, what am I breaking? I'm breaking that line right here. See? I'm breaking that line. And I'm like this, and I'm about to come out. I'll switch knees, and then I'll come in. Same thing with this side. As I'm moving here, I'll switch knees. If you have a reflex sight and you're shooting around barriers, I'm gonna bring the gun out. All right, so I'm gonna watch, watch my uh, my shots. Watch the gun snap back online. Watch the gun snap back online. All right, so I'm not gonna even really aim. I'm just gonna come out, right? Because once the gun snaps back, it's just gonna bring it back to the natural position. So here's the drill. Hear the cadence. Hear the cadence. Okay? Once you feel good, then you pick up the cadence. We get it? We understand the drill.